We have a bunch of fresh eggs and they arrived via mail in a plastic tube. Guess what's inside? That's right, they are moth eggs. From a moth with venomous caterpillars, so be careful. They were collected in Guatemala but raised in captivity in Europe for several generations. Their name is Perifalba arcae. Their eggs take over a month to hatch, which is a slightly longer than most moths on my channel. These are the eggs of some tiny little devils that we are about to raise. It took them over a month to hatch, however. This species has a long development time compared to the average Saturnidae, which typically hatches in about two weeks. This species takes four to six weeks in captivity based on temperature. But our babies had finally popped up, it seems. What cuties! After the babies hatched, I decided to scoop them up using a stick and place them on a bunch of potential host plants. So the way I keep them is by keeping them in an, in an empty faunarium. But instead of putting the lid on, I just wrap some gauze around it so that it ventilates the container quite well. For a while they do seem disoriented, but after they come back to their senses, something funny happens. The caterpillars begin traveling in lines. They are a social species, that is why. They feed and rest together, side by side, social caterpillars, and they travel in procession. The host plant provided to them is oak tree. They can also eat plants such as hazel, cherry, bramble and more. Soon, they were about to shed their skins to instar number two. Can you tell the difference? They are slightly bigger now and their head capsules are shiny brown and red. Aha, there you go, instar two. Do you like them? These babies will develop into rather large pieces of moths eventually. Now instar number two almost looks the same as instar number one. So I don't want to show too much footage of them because viewers appreciate visual differences. But I do have to conclude them because my videos would show every life stage preferably of any particular insect I want to breed. So take a good look at them right now because my friends we are moving on soon to the next instar. This is instar number 3. And now their spikes are way more pronounced than they were before. If you touch them they can inject venom. Beautiful toxic little babies. And soon they would shed their skins once again. Now, as you may have noticed, we are moving through these cycles a little bit fast because, well, I made a lot of long videos recently. Let's have a shorter one.
This is insert number four. Devilish, isn't it? Look at those toxic spikes. That's not something I would like to mess with if I were a predator. These are no joke. So now there is a word of caution for you, my dear viewers. If you ever spot an unknown caterpillar with sharp looking spines, do not touch them before you have identified them. Some spiny caterpillars can be dangerously venomous, so stay away from them before you make sure it is safe for you. Yep, they do look again, quite different. It seems that they were developing rather well on oak tree. Now let's move forward for a moment in time, because their appearance becomes more fascinating. Very devilish, don't you think? On my channel we have raised a whole lot of Saturnidae silk moths, and along, among all these species the Perifoba are certainly one of the more prickly ones. It's like raising a bunch of sausage, sausage cactuses. Wait, is that even the right plural? Cactuses? Cacti? Anyway, off topic here. So interestingly this instar starts out as red, but it slowly becomes green before they shed their skin again to the last life stage. You can see how some of them are already shedding once again right now, so get ready. While this instar starts out reddish, at the end of it they become rather green. After that you can see them prepare for their shedding of their skins once again, and thus entering another life stage. Yep, I think this is the final instar. Most Saturnidae have five instars, by the way. Not all of them, but most of them. Although some of them can have as little as four, and as much as eight instars, as far as I know. But this does look like a final instar. They were rapidly increasing in size. Oak tree is a good host plant for many Hemileukinae subfamily silk moths. And these seem to be no exception. The spines of this species, when touched, will deliver a spicy venomous injection. So make sure not to grab them, especially if you see similar caterpillars in the wild, unless you're Bart Coppins. In that case, you're going to test it out on yourself. This is the final instar, and now they are quite prickly, so to say. These silk moths are from the Hemileukinae subfamily, a subfamily found on the American continent, and larvae commonly do have venomous spines all over their bodies. So far it seems like oak tree was an excellent choice for them, with very little losses and much growth in a short time. In the final instar they seem to have become somewhat more solitary although they do hang out in close proximity in a lot of occasions. That begs one question. 
How painful is their sting? Let's find out. So how venomous are these guys? Today I'm going to answer this question by hurting my, myself. I'm going to sting myself on my wrist with this big venomous caterpillar, this Periphoba archi. But before we begin, I must um, tell you a very important disclaimer. On our beautiful pl planet, there's a lot of beautiful creatures like this one. A lot of caterpillars on this planet are venomous. Some are mild. They will give you some itching or some rashes. Some are a bit more extreme. They will hurt you a lot. There's also caterpillars on planet Earth that can kill you. Some caterpillars in our world are deadly. So don't try this at home. Because I am very scared of, uh, for example, young people like children watching my videos and trying to copy my behavior. That's a very stupid idea, especially if you don't know what the species is you're dealing with. If you live in South America, for example, in the Amazon rainforest, grabbing random caterpillars, it can cost you your life. It's not a joke. Deadly species exist. Painful species exist. It just pooped, by the way. Yay. Um, second of all, there's no such thing as a harmless venomous caterpillar. Everybody responds to venom differently. For example, if you are allergic, if you are known to have an allergic reaction to insects and you get stung, um, then for you the venom may be ten times worse than for somebody else. In fact, there's allergic people and to them uh, something like a wasp sting or a bee sting can be deadly. So how do you know if you're allergic or not? The problem is you don't know unless you try. And if you gamble, if you take the wrong gamble, you can actually end up in the hospital or forfeit your life. I'm a very stupid man. I am irresponsible. I am doing this for entertainment. I like to think I know what I'm talking about. I'm experienced with insects. Uh, I've done a lot of research on them, but no amount of expertise can make something like this 100% safe. Uh, I don't want to be the Coyote Peterson of moths. But I am doing this to demonstrate to you because I know how my body responds to these guys. Because during the rearing I've been stung. I know it's going to hurt. Uh, but please don't try this at home. Don't try this yourself. You can severely impair your own health by doing this. Okay, just let this stupid YouTube man do the silly things for you so you don't have to do them. Let's get started. Right, so here's my wrist. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the caterpillar and press its back here with the venomous spines against my wrist. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Hmm, strangely it does not hurt. Being stung by caterpillars, the effect always comes later. So you, you don't really feel the venom at first. It's very mild. And now I can feel it, it's starting to burn. It's like a slow burn. You don't really feel the sting until a few minutes later. So, that's uh... Yeah, now I'm starting to feel it. Yep. Yep. It's um, uncomfortable. It's not extremely painful, but it's painful enough to be to make me look like this right now. See my facial expression? You can see that I'm in discomfort. Uh, oh, I can feel it in my wrist. I mean, I'm not screaming in pain, but I don't want to overact either. I don't like those YouTubers who are like for views trying to overact like, oh my God. But uh, I'm telling you, yeah, it does hurt. But the most uh, pain will happen in a few minutes. I can feel the venom. If you keep looking at my wrist, slowly what you will see is, can you see it? It's already a bit reddish, but eventually it will start to blister or uh, you will have a contact urticaria. Hmm. So, uh, like I said, let me say it again. If you're watching this channel, 
Don't try this at home. It's a stupid idea. I'm not that much of a professional either. I just pretend to be online, but... Uh, It is a nice caterpillar though, isn't it? Maybe we can show a close-up while the venom is working. Yes. What a beauty, isn't it? What a beauty. In the family Saturnidae, there's actually a lot of uh, dangerous caterpillars. The most painful one I felt so far is called the Dervia centralis. It's probably the worst thing I felt. Let's see how my wrist is doing. Ah, you can see some bumps on there, a little bit. I'm not going to sit here all day. Maybe we should check, check back in like 10 minutes or later and then uh, see the, oops, see the damage. Ouch, it's now seven minutes later and my wrist looks like this. Can you see it? The damage is done. Uh, it's hurting me right now, I'm feeling pain. If I had to rate the pain, I would give it maybe a 6 out of 10. Uh, it feels like if I had to describe it to something, it feels like your skin is sunburned. You know that feeling? That tingling, painful sensation. Like you've been in the sun all day and you forgot to wear the sunscreen and you're going to bed at night and you feel your skin, it's hurting. It's about the same feeling to me. The good news is it doesn't last very long. Uh, the pain will last about 5 to 10 minutes usually. Uh, um, don't try this at home, okay? Don't try this at home. Do this with the wrong species and you will be fucked up. That's not a joke. But, uh, Perifoba are growing really well. And I hope soon we can uh, find some cocoons. But first there's something we must do. Yikes. Okay, not super painful, but definitely unpleasant. Although the burning sensation wears off pretty fast. I would rate it a 5 out of 10. Annoying. A bit uncomfortable, but also not very painful. And the feeling does go away kind of fast. Anyway, like I said, be careful and don't try this at home, children, because some species can be deadly, especially if you have allergies. I know what I am doing, okay? Wow, that was epic, huh? The things I do for views. That's the YouTuber life for you. The desperation for attention is real, fellas. Anyway, let's move on for the caterpillars rare nearing pupation. These are fully grown and soon will be ready to spin their cocoons and turn into moths. Okay guys, here it is. All the caterpillars that I raised so far. Can you see the ones that I actually want to pupate? That's a big difference, isn't it? Here on top, you can see one of those. Can you see it? Color is completely different and there's two of them right now. And as you can see, we did a really good job. These guys are utterly uh, healthy, happy, big caterpillars, exactly as they're supposed to be. Uh, not all my breeding projects are a success. You have some success and you have some failures. But this one, oh my god, I consider this one to be a success. Most definitely. And look at the size of these big stingers. Wow, they're actually kind of big, don't you agree? So these moths are going to be amazing. And I'm very happy to show them to you on YouTube. So, uh, wow. Aren't they cool now? Just for comparison, here this uh, one that wants to pupate. It turns dark. A lot of caterpillars do this, this is not the only species. But uh, I like it when they do it, because it makes it easy for me as a breeder to know when they really want to pupate. Just look at that, that's cool, huh? That's really cool. Whoops. They're starting to escape, let's put them back. <clears throat> okay guys. So I've been informed that Perifoba, they don't burrow in the soil. What they do is they descend to the floor and spin a very weak, loose cocoon here below the leaf litter. 
That's unusual because usually species will spin cocoons in the tree or they will burrow in the soil. But this species makes a compromise. They descend to the forest floor level. And here is a lot of leaf litter in their natural habitat usually. And inside this litter they spin very lazy, lazy cocoons with a few strands of silk. Basically gluing some leaves together. So they're gonna need a substrate. Now, let's see. Uh, I will take a moment to thank all the people who have lately donated to my channel. Because I'm going to use Svage moss and this stuff is expensive. This is like $20. $20 per package. So all of you who have been tipping and donating to my YouTube channel because it's completely demonetized by YouTube. Thank you. This is the stuff I use. Uh, is one of the things I spend it on. Because I couldn't afford this stuff myself. It needs not to use it in such large amounts. But it is really the best for my animals. So my moths and caterpillars, thank you as well. Because you have the best luxury material to spin cocoons in. And it will ensure their health and their survival. Thanks to you guys. I used to use paper towels. It's the cheap option. And uh, cheap options are usually not the best for my animals, but they are the best for my wallet. But uh, we have a good budget now. So I'm going to take some of this stuff. See, it's this dried moss. So you're just going to put it here, or let's not spill. Put here on the bottom of your cage. There you go. There you go. I hope they enjoy it. I hope they enjoy it. Yep, my idea was that in this layer of moss the insects can finally pupate. Let's see if it worked or not. Ah, it seems most of the caterpillars are gone now. Here's one though. One caterpillar still left eating. It's for the rest. I have to look here at the bottom and I feel something here. Aha! See this? Can you see it? This is actually a cocoon. It's uh, inside the moss, as I said. They spin these particles together. Oh my god. For some reason, here two caterpillars made their cocoons next to each other. Can you see it? Pretty cool, huh? Wow. That's what they do, they hide here in, in the moss. So let's see, that is, I think this is one, two, three cocoons at least. Okay, so here is my plan. Caterpillar uh, box with moths. I'm going to put these uh, cocoons here. I'm going to put them in here on the bottom. As you can see a lot of pupating larvae in here. I'm going to put them in here, in this box. On top of that uh, I found some other prepupal larvae. They're sort of walking all over each other. Just gonna add some moss here on top, some extra moss. Then I'm going to add more prepupal caterpillars, here they are, because they are making a mess right now. These dudes are really making a mess, I don't know what they're doing. So I have to help them a little. More prepupal caterpillars. You see? So there's... Hmm, this one is not discolored yet, but uh, I'm pretty sure this one is going to pupate as well. 
Its legs are not sticky anymore. This is definitely also a pre-pupa. Then uh, next I'm going to keep it a little bit moist, like this. They like a little bit humidity. Let's see if I can do this, yes. This is good for them. Some more moss. Just gonna let them pupate in here. There you go. All right. All right. So there's one. There's two. There's at least two caterpillars left feeding. Uh, otherwise, in here I collected a lot of pre-pupa. I hope they make it. I hope my plan works. Because uh, I think we're going to have about 10 or maybe more pupa if this works out well. All right, people, I'm going to put them into cold storage in a container in my basement. If everything goes well, then next year we will warm them up in spring and we will have our beautiful little insects ready. All right, now it's winter and we wait 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 and we wait. But you get the point, right? And we wait. Winter is a quite boring time for an insect breeder. So many months later in spring, we will return. Oof. This pupa is deformed. That sucks. Hope the rest are okay. Oh no. Another deformed pupa. That really sucks, bro. That's two deformed pupa. Man, hope the rest are fine. Seems we have one healthy one. I'm a bit concerned now. The first two pupa I found are deformed. That's a big loss, man. It sucks. That's bad news, potentially. Let's see what else we have here. Man. This is not good, man. <gasps> Another deformed pupa. Are you serious, dude? Are you serious? Three deformed pupa. Wow. Something has gone wrong, guys. Something here went terribly wrong. Oh my God. I'm very pessimistic now. This, this one looks okay. This one looks healthy. Man. Yeah, this one looks alright. I hope the rest aren't all like this. That would make, would be a big problem for me. You know? Carefully open this up. Oh good, thank God, here's a healthy pupa. It seems the ones who made a cocoon have pupated well, but the ones who did not make a cocoon failed. So I don't know why that is. I don't know why that is, but it's disturbing and annoying. My guess is these larvae need to spin a cocoon to pupate properly. And if they don't, then... Uh, well, here's a healthy cocoon, see? Of a pupa from the cocoon. 
Hmm. Let's see another healthy pupa. Thank God there's some healthy pupa. Please be healthy, please be healthy. Ah, another healthy one. Whew, that's a relief. I was scared for a moment that all my pupa were filled. That would be a massive loss for me. Here we find a cocoon with a larva still inside. Let's not disturb him too much. Wow, this is... Uh, it's not all good news, guys. Man. It's tough. It's tough luck, man. See what else we got. A lot of them fail to pupate for some reason. That's uh, really bad, man. Hmm. Man. That's depressing. What the hell is this? Empty cocoon. Hmm. Man. Okay guys, so this really sucks. On the left side of the stick, I put all the pupa that are healthy. So it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five. We have six normal looking pupa. So we're going to have six moths. But on the right side of the stick, here is pupa with problems. As you can see this one, this caterpillar failed to even pupate. It's a half pupa, half caterpillar. It's stuck inside its skin. That's really freaky and gross. Wow, that's so weird, man. This one is absolutely dead. As you can see, some of these pupa are missing parts. This pupa is missing wink in the wing case. Okay, see it? These four pupa, I don't know why, but they are severely dis deformed and I don't think they will survive. Can you see it? These are very uh, abnormal deformed pupa. And I think, think something went wrong. Uh, it looks like the moss I used to make them pupate somehow got stuck. So maybe it wasn't a good choice. Maybe I should not have used this moss for the perifoba. Oops. That really sucks. But uh, one thing I noticed is that uh, all the pupa that failed did not make a cocoon. But all, all these healthy ones, all the good looking ones, they are all inside a cocoon. So maybe the larva needs to make a cocoon to, pr to pupate properly. But for some reason these four didn't end up making one and I think these ones are going to die this really sucks because that's a really a waste of my work and effort I think this one is also a little bit deformed uh, I don't know if this one could make it but the rest is dead I think this is this is dead these one two three four five these six pupa are normal looking though they are healthy and that's the good news Now on YouTube I often like to pretend everything goes smoothly, that everything goes perfect with my insects. But in my, uh, in my mini series Moth Cycles you can see this is not true and that behind the scenes a lot of things go wrong. Uh, this, is, this is a bad moment because I, I worked really hard to raise these caterpillars and basically about half of them fail to pupate properly. Like this is... This is this took about, I think, two and a half months or more to raise. These are very slow growing caterpillars. So it's really frustrating to see that like uh, four out of nine were deformed. Like that's a, that's a serious loss. And my chances of having a pairing now have seriously declined because of this. Because I have a much smaller number. So uh, that, that's really terrible. There is some good news though. I still have this one caterpillar who is still uh, pupating. 
So this one could still be a pupa. If, if he makes it and uh, doesn't deform, then we have seven uh, healthy ones. I hope that happens. I will try to reduce the humidity and see if that works. I will also try to put the larva in a different container to see if he pupates better. Maybe it's the moss, I don't know. Um, there's also one caterpillar left who is still eating on the plant right now. It's the last caterpillar I have that's not pupating. So if, if we have two more healthy pupa, I will have eight healthy ones. And these guys, I'm going to remove them now. I'm going to euthanize them. That's a fancy way of saying that I'm going to kill them. That's because these are so deformed. If, if I keep them alive, they will start to rot and they will die eventually. But what's worse is sometimes these very deformed animals, sometimes they still turn into moths. And that's a bad thing because the moth will be severely deformed and it will just be suffering and I don't like that. So I'm going to give this pupa a chance. This is the least deformed one. Although its legs and antenna look terrible. But maybe, oops, maybe this one will still be alive. But this one I'm going to euthanize them by freezing them. It's the only way. I don't want these animals to suffer. So where am I going to keep my pupa? I'm going to put them back here in this substrate. It will keep them moist. Um, even though it wasn't a good substrate for pupation maybe, it, uh, it's still a good substrate for the pupa themselves. So I'm just gonna tuck them in here, cover them a little and spray with water once in a while. Eventually the moss will hatch from this. I'll put in a stick on the side so they can climb out when they hatch. I'm not sure why they had so many failed pupa. I think it can also be bad luck. Because viruses etc. can also cause deformations. Although it does seem like the moss was stuck in the pupa a lot. So maybe it, maybe it was the substrate. Maybe this moss was not a good choice for this species. Oh yikes. There you go. Okay guys, so here's a fun experiment. Here we have one of the pupating caterpillars of Periphoba. It's one of the last ones. And I'm just gonna put them here in this container with paper towels and see if it properly pupates. If this one forms a perfect pupa, then that means maybe they don't like being inside moss at all. So, if that's true, then uh, I can't save the other pupa that died, but I will know in the future if I breed uh, this species again. Maybe they don't want to be inside moss. So let's find out. Now let's see, the last caterpillar, this pupa which was pupated in a moist paper towel, kind of looks better, I think, I'm not sure, I can't judge because not the entire pupa is visible. Let me take it out for a second, carefully. Wow, this one looks perfect. And this one pupated in wet paper towel. But this is anecdotal evidence because I would need more pupa to test this with, but maybe it was not a good idea to put them in this moss. Hmm, if I ever breed the species again, I will try to make them pupate in wet paper towel and see if that works better, because maybe I made a misjudgment. Hmm. <clears throat> Let's look at the current status. All the caterpillars have pupated. Let's collect the pupa, which are the result of our hard work. Now, these uh, perifoba, getting them to come out of their pupa is very... Well, it's not challenging, but it can take a very long time. 
Uh, I have friends that have definitely had these pupa over. Well, who, how long is it? Six months, seven months, and still not coming out of their pupa. If you are lucky, it may happen faster. But if you're unlucky, these guys can, uh, let's say that they can, they know how to sleep over. Huh? So, uh, let's see what is it that we all have here. Ladies and gentlemen, so this is our final result. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven healthy looking pupa. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a dry throat. Seven healthy looking pupa. So potentially we will have seven healthy moths. Mm, it's not that bad, but I would have liked to have more because we, as I showed you, we lost we lost a lot of pupa and pupation. Some of them I had to euthanize. But here I have something else. Here are three pupa that are slightly deformed, as you can see. Can you see their slight deformations? As you can see, these three are oddly shaped and I don't know if they will uh, hatch into healthy moths. But these pupa still look healthy enough for me to keep them and see if uh, maybe a normal moth will hatch from them. Probably not, but you never know. So we have... Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven normal moths. Plus one, two, plus three freaks. And with some luck, one of these freaks can still hatch into a normal uh, insect. Who knows? These pupas don't look that damaged. So I'm willing to give these a try. Uh, I don't, still don't understand why we lost so many of them in pupation. It was uh, frustrating. Not all my breeding projects are problem free. Uh, breeding moths is a pretty difficult hobby. You will, it doesn't matter. I've been doing this for over 10 years and I still run into crazy surprises like this one. It's in this case, you will sometimes run into uh, amazing surprises and amazing discoveries. Or in this case, very frustrating and annoying surprises. That's how it is, huh? So I just keep them, I'm going to keep them in the moss. I think this moss was maybe not a good idea to have them pupate in. But to store the pupa, I think it's a good idea to store the pupa in here. So there is that. Yeah, uh, how long will it take for these to become actual moths? I would say anything between two to seven months. So if we have some bad luck, these guys are going to be dormant and maybe they think it's the dry season. They can diapause. It's a species from Central America, but uh, some places in Central America do have strong seasons. They don't have a cold winter maybe like we in Europe, but uh, they, they can have actually a colder winter season. It's not like the winter we have in Europe, but it's still cold. But they can also have very strong dry seasons and rainy seasons. So, despite being from places like Costa Rica, Mexico, that doesn't mean they can't hibernate. A lot of Saturnids from the even tropical regions sometimes even uh, hibernate. Although it's not always a hibernation in the traditional sense. Sometimes it is actually. So yeah, let's just keep them like this. Uh, they'll crawl out when they are ready to become moths. Wow, it turns out the lights are not working very well today. It sucks. Let me try again. Mm -hmm. Ah, there you go. Much better. This is my dirty, dark and cold basement, that's right. Um, <clears throat> 
Let me flip the camera. Right now in here it's 16 degrees Celsius, which is cooler than outdoors because spring has arrived. That's right ladies and gentlemen. And that means that it's finally time for me to take some of these bad boys out of hibernation. So um, they have been in here all winter. Let's see if I can dig them up. <clears throat> hmm. Hope they're healthy. They feel healthy, I guess. I hope they hibernated well. There you go. Looks alright, I think. So the pupa of this species hibernate. Therefore, I will place them in cold storage guys. until the next spring. I use a container with a layer of vermiculite on the bottom of, and store the pupa in there cold. Amazing content, huh? Okay, that was sarcastic and I'm not sure why. I should make fun of my own videos. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be curious to see if they survived hibernation or not. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something uh, cool about this video. Um, first of all, my hair once again looks terrible, but I just came out of the shower, just forgive me. It's drying up, okay? Uh, but something cool just happened. One of our Periphoba archai moths just hatched. Yes. Good news, good news, one of our moths came out and I'm about to reveal it in one second. But before I finally show you the moths, I want to talk about something. It's almost a year after I started making this video. Um, this species only seems to have one generation a year, the pupa hibernate. I started filming this video in uh, summer 2020, now it's uh, spring 2021. Makes sense. The life cycle of this insect takes one complete and entire year. Hope you guys understand that for me that's a lot of work, man. Anyway, let's uh, cut down to the chase. Are you ready? Oh, can you see it? That's a weird species, isn't it? Here we see the female of the Periphoba archae. As you can see, it has a modest size. It's a big Saturnid, it's also not really a super colorful Saturnid, but it's, its position, its wing shape is definitely unique. And I think we'll have to make a close-up in a few seconds, before we admire this thingy here. But let me just show you how uh, odd this is. These species are not very often bred in captivity, which is a shame. I guess it's because they are brown, people uh, prefer the colorful stuff. There you go. It is, in my opinion, a very unique and special species. Periphoba archae is a Saturnidae moth found from Panada and New Mexico to Colombia and Venezuela. The imagos are rather inconspicuous and brown, although they do have an impressive yellow and black abdomen that they like to expose to predators in order to intimidate them. Hmm. Personally, I wouldn't expose myself to predators, especially not if I was a minor. That's a really bad joke. Despite that, the moths are harmless, so they are just bluffing. They are common in the wild and not often raised in captivity. Feeding on plants such as locust, cassia, oak tree, sumac, ardesia and a few others in the wild. They can be spotted in gardens and parks, marshy areas and places with a lot of woody vegetation. When disturbed, these moths curl their abdomens, revealing a wasp-like pattern of alternating dark and light stripes.
In the past, I have raised this video of uh, these pieces before, and I should have some old videos on them, but never their entire life cycle. So there you go. Now you can see all the developmental stages in this video. The way I see my channel is almost like an encyclopedia of moth species. Of course, there are so many species of moths on our planet, it's impossible for me to film all of them alone. Even if I could clone myself and there were thousands of Bart Coppenses, it would still not be enough to even begin covering a significant amount of moths, but it doesn't need to be complete. It's about a journey, although it will never end, and all the things we learn along the way. A combination of education and fun. I also think it's very important for people to look up information about a certain moth species, to receive high definition video of other life stages on YouTube. That could be very helpful. I do wish I had my own space, like a laboratory to raise them someday. That would increase my content quality so much. What I like about this uh, species is when they are angry, when you disturb them and you touch them, they'll kind of curl up like a ball. See that? And uh, this is basically their defensive position. And they'll just like lay like this for a couple of minutes before uh, coming back to life. And I guess this is how they intimidate predators with these um, brightly colored abdomens. I suppose its body reminds us of a wasp and a bird or another predator may assume that it is a dangerous animal that um, is best left alone because of the warning colors. So is this insect actually harmful? The answer is no. As far as I know it's completely harmless. So um, yeah, it's, it's basically just bluffing. It really has just these cool colors just to uh, intimidate us, but it's not working because we do know better, don't we? I think that's a really cool feature though. There's actually a lot of Saturnids who do this and most of them are of the Hemileukinae subfamily, if you know what that means. Like uh, the relatives of Automeris and stuff, Dirphia, Paradirphia, Periphoba, um, just all the stuff like that, Serodirphia. Pseudodirphia, like all the Dirphia like uh, Saturnids. I know this sounds like magic spells from Harry Potter if you're not into entomology, but if you know what it means, you'll understand. And uh, all of them, they curl uh, kind of up like a ball if they're angry and they just curl up their abdomens, which are usually very colorful. I think it's funny. I think it's pretty too. I like a moth with a pretty abdomen. As you can see, its antenna are yellow. It really is a fluffy species. This is a female, by the way. And you can just see how she's curling up like that. Now, I do wonder if we're going to get a male to fertilize her. Uh, I don't have that many pupa, so these chances are going to be slim. 
However, my chances of breeding them are not zero, but they are they are, they are near zero because you need uh, almost perfect synchronization to have a male and female at the same time after almost a year and we didn't have that much pupa. I think we started with how many eggs? Like 30 eggs and out of that we got like 6 pupa. So yeah. Anyway, just a cool fun fact for all of you. Alright people, let me tell you something about myself and the video you're watching today. You're watching a video on YouTube where I am breeding moths. That's what I've become a little bit famous for on the internet. Breaking videos about moths. In fact, this show that you're watching is helping me make a living. Believe it or not, I do make a little bit of money from making these YouTube episodes. So I guess that you could say that this is my business. I turned breeding moths into a business enterprise of entertainment. That's very interesting because not many people have managed to do this so far. There's other people on YouTube who try, but they haven't succeeded. Not to this degree. But it sounds like I'm bragging, like haha, I'm Bart, I'm so successful, I get paid for my hobby. It's true, I do. But I'm not here to brag today or show off or tell you how awesome I am. Now let me tell you about discrimination. Here's the thing, right? It's my business to make videos about moths and butterflies. And I do notice that when I upload a video of a species like this, it gets less attention. Why does it get less attention? Well, that's because this insect is not colorful. I mean, it's, look at this beautiful abdomen. Look at this beautiful shape. How it spreads the wings. Like everything about this insect, it, it makes my heart beat faster. I love this. What you see here on my hand, I love this. This is art. This is what makes me the most happy in my entire life. Studying these fascinating and beautiful creatures. I love it. It gives me the same feeling as genuinely being in love. It makes me so happy. I love it. But it also makes me kind of sad that when I make a video about an insect and they're not super big or super colorful, you know, they tend to get less attention. They tend to, tend to get less views. So that's why I often, I, I try to breed very colorful species, like moon moths. Oh, moon moths, they're very popular. They'll give you many views. Or stuff like the rosy maple moth. People love that because they are so colorful. But stuff like this tends to get ignored. Hmm, in my opinion, that's a bit of a shame. I would like to change that. But I'm not sure how to change that, you know? I'm just trying to make the show entertaining. I'm trying to make it fascinating. I'm trying to show you guys the beauty of these creatures. And um, I mean, there's so much to tell about these, so much complexity, such interesting life cycles. And I really hope that I can change people's mindset about, oh, we only want to see, we only want to see colorful stuff, only big, shiny, iridescent blue butterflies and stuff. Let's change that attitude. See, the real beauty of an insect for me, the real beauty of an insect for me, is com it comes from its complexity. Every insect is very complex. It has its own story to tell, its own life history, its own role in the environment. It's unique. And I think that if you look at the biology of something, then you don't need colors anymore. You've grown beyond the appearance. You look beyond its exterior, you look what's inside, you see the complexity, the interesting biology, the, the beauty that is hidden, the beauty that is not told in color, the, the beauty that is in information, the beauty that is in the spectrum of life. I apologize if this sounds very out of place, what I'm saying. I just have really wanted to get that off my chest for some reason. Thanks for watching. Let's hope that I get a male and female.
we don't have much pupa. We only have like six pupa of this species because the pupa they didn't uh, pupate properly. Some of them were deformed, so we don't have that much. We need to be really lucky to have a male and female at the same time. Let's hope it works. Don't like my hairstyle? Deal with it. I just came out of the shower. Believe it or not, Bart Coppens, he still showers sometimes. <laughs> um, thing is, the show must go on, okay? Sometimes I kind of look uh, rubbish. But I, I constantly have to film the development of, uh, of my animals. That's, that's the thing about being a YouTuber for a job. You have to keep going, no matter uh, if it suits you or not. Because if I stop documenting this, there will be a gap in progress. So, um, guys, we have uh, two, two moths right now. Two Periphoba archae. Can you see them? Let me put that ugly cage away from the background. So it's distracting that white thing behind me. Can you see it? So, uh, yeah. One of them is uh, curling up his abdomen as usual. What's very unfortunate is we have two females. Female one, female two. And uh, if you have 5000 IQ, you must have realized I need a male and a female to breed them. So uh, yeah, I kind of hope those males are gonna hurry up anytime soon. I'm gonna be honest, cause if they don't hurry up, I may miss my opportunity to breed this species. It's gonna be a very close call because we only had like a nine healthy pupa. Uh, you guys remember many of them had uh, trouble pupating. So uh, yeah, because of that uh, we, we don't have the big number this year. It's not like I have a couple of uh, 70 of them. Nope. Small number. Two females so far. Let's really wait for the males. There you go. Currently you are looking at a female. I was hoping to be lucky enough to have some males to pair with them. Let's wait a few days for more of them to come out. Yes, looks like I raised a few females. How nice. Despite that, the males are still missing, so I hope that soon they emerge from their pupa. That would be epic. So we waited and waited and waited and waited and waited and waited. Yeah, let's stop that. Well, you get a point. I was waiting for more moths to come out, but something is wrong because none of them were coming out. I had a bad feeling about this. I waited extremely long and I noticed no males were emerging at all and neither were any other specimens. That's when I started to get worried. I have to be honest with you ladies and gentlemen. I've been waiting for an abnormally long time, for over six months to finish this video, desperately waiting for the rest of the pupa to hatch for the males to come out so I can complete the life cycle. But it's been taking so long, I'm starting to feel concerned. And I think that for once, not everything has gone right. And I'll show you the problem. So, I've handled a lot of pupa in my life. Uh, let me adjust the light for a second. And when there's something wrong with a pupa, I can feel it. These pupa don't feel right, they feel very light, very warm and to be honest dehydrated and I fear that they are dead. Therefore I am going to break one open and if I am correct, if I put pressure on it, 
Oh no. It's inside have been consumed by a fungus. So, oops. Why does this happen? I don't know. Uh, but early into the video we already had problems with the pupil stage. Especially the fact that they failed to pupate. I'm waiting for the camera to be, yeah. Um, anyway, it's very clear to me that something has gone terribly wrong and the pupa from the start were infected. So let's check out the other pupa, some of the other ones. If they're alive, I'm murdering them, but I don't think that they're alive at this point. See, I can just crack them open. And the inside reveals a lot of white fungus. So, now one of the major killer of insects and Lepidopterans is fungus, fungi. And it seems that these have died from a fungal infection that has consumed them on the inside. So the moths that were inside of these pupa are effectively gone. Dead. That's it. And that means the end of this breeding project. We had a lot of bad luck. We had a lot of them die along the way uh, from failed pupation. I don't understand because the rearing went pretty well. I had, I didn't have that much losses. I raised many caterpillars to the final instar and then to pupation. But like the moment they started to pupate, they just started to deform and dry up and shrivel. And this is just an epic failure. And ladies and gentlemen, this is going to mark the end of this video. I, did, I was doubting to not upload it. Um, because this breeding project didn't go well. We ended up with only three females. And that's not really a good result. But then I decided that mistakes are important. It's when we make mistakes when we learn the most. I still got the whole life cycle. We went from egg to moth. You got to see some of the females, even though the life cycle is incomplete. We had a lot of deformities in the pupil stage and some of the pupa were just entirely consumed by a mysterious fungus. It's just so weird and I, I rarely have this happen to be honest. But next time I will breed them again and hopefully have a better result. And maybe we can make a moth cycles episode about this species finally. But not this time. We had too many heavy losses and deaths. If you have any tips, write it in the comments. What could I have done to have a better result? If you follow this channel, you've seen that I've been successful at raising some very rare and hard to breed species. I'm not inexperienced, but even experienced breeders are going to suffer problems like this once in a while. Breeding moths is a very challenging hobby. And I think I don't want to delete this video. I want to upload it on my channel so we can talk about failure and how breeding moths is a lot of trial and error and how important it is to admit that you make mistakes even when it's embarrassing, you know? So, um, but yeah, this, I'm so sorry. I wanted to show you more moths and the male is missing from this video. That's frustrating. It's like there's one life stage missing. Mm, so annoying. I hope you enjoyed watching it regardless, despite my failure and the weird conclusion of this video. We failed. This is a video of a failed breeding project. Yes, on my channel, I like to show you when things work out perfectly. When I am successful with my insects, I like to brag about it. But this does not always happen. This is one of those days where I was unsuccessful. I failed to breed this species because many of my pupa dried out and died. And I also lost many during the pupation process. But we can learn from mistakes. Yes, mistakes are embarrassing. And we don't like to admit that we have failed, but it's impossible to become an expert without making mistakes first. It's during moments like these that I learn more things and new techniques that can improve my breeding ability. And we can learn together. You can chat with me personally, add me on Instagram or join our Discord or Telegram. Links are below in the video. Because learning is something that we all do together. 
and I have formed a huge community of other insect breeders like me that all like to share their success and their failures. If you enjoy watching my videos, it is worth getting in touch with me and my insect breeding community where we share these moments together. We also do group chatting sessions and voice calls sometimes. So join our Discord or our WhatsApp server. Thank you for watching. Hopefully next time we can breed the insect again and have more success next time. I would like to see this insect in a Moth Cycles episode, but that didn't work out this time. I tried my best despite my failure this time. At least we did get to see the life cycle, which resulted in a few females. So not everything was for nothing. You did get a life cycle, but no pairing and no males. Anyway, see you next time. All right, people, on my channel, you can see a lot of great and successful breeding projects. But I feel like this video is not going to be one of those successful videos. Uh, the first two females that I had a while ago, they are dead now, as you can see. They are lifeless. These moths, they only live for a short time. So that's very unfortunate. It sucks. And today I've had yet another female. See that? She's pretty. She's fresh. But um, the thing is, I have so little. Um, I have so little cocoons at this point. I feel like this is not going to be. Um, a continuation of the bloodline in this video. I just feel like it's not going to happen. They are hatching really sporadically, uh, really slowly, and not all my pupa are looking healthy. I think maybe we're not even going to get um, the males we need at all. I, even though I have a few male pupa, they look very dried out, and uh, that's very unfortunate. The thing about breeding Saturnids is often like very much a gamble if you're going to be successful or not. And there were, in this case, there were a lot of complications. Rearing them was very easy, but it seems like I had a lot of losses during the pupation, but also in the pupal stage itself. And um, yeah, that's really p kind of painful because I've been working on this life cycle video for a very long time. But uh, hey, I guess. I guess we cannot be successful every day, huh? It's a really nice species though. If I fail, I'm still going to upload this video. Obviously you're watching it right now. And sometimes it's important to show my viewers that uh, I don't always succeed. Because otherwise it makes me look better than I really am. But uh, yeah. I guess next time I'll try to breed this species again. And uh, maybe then finally Next time we will be more successful, I hope. Hmm.